Welcome to Matters Over Miles, Season 3, Episode 4. We're back. I am your very lovable host, <laughs> Whitney Walker, and this is my sidekick, mm. Mary Pat That's payback Smithson. for Episode 2. That's fine. Hi, I'm Mary Pat Smithson. We co-host the show together. <laughs> really, we wouldn't have a podcast show without Mary Pat because I don't know how to set up any of the stuff that you can't see. That's true. It would not be a thing. So congrats to me. <laughs> I'm going to fix your little thing. Who there is this go. hat? He's, your microphone's hat's a little off. I discovered. No, don't. Can I show him? Oh, fine. Everyone else is not going to know. Okay. For all the audio people. Well, these are wind protectors. So like, it just kind of keeps excess stuff from so very cheaply. If there's keeps, a hurricane. Yeah. You can't a, hear it. If this becomes <laughs> this becomes the upper room and the Holy Spirit rushes in, <laughs> you'll still be able to hear us talking. It's called a pop filter. Yeah. It's so that anyway, everything can be smooth. But I love today, wind protector. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered that I actually hate these things for some personal reasons because a couple of times... There I was, have been singing. There was into one them. morning in New Hampshire <laughs> where there was dust covering one of these pop filters in a church. And I inhaled she breathed it. In. There was no reason that we had them on the microphones. It didn't make any sense. No, it was just an old school way of doing stuff. And I think they're color coded so that certain people knew which color they had. But it, regardless, long it story had- short, it resulted in me having an actual <laughs> fit of coughing in the middle of, <laughs> oh, what was the song? I'll be able to think of it. Forever Rain. Forever Rain. <laughs> You are more. <laughs> and I literally like. You not- are more. I you are more. <laughs> I couldn't get it together. And I finally just said, I'm so sorry. You I guys- have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> she goes off the mic. She's crying. Her eyes are watering. She's crying. And I'm just standing up there like, <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm crying right now. I think that Nick was with us too. And he was just like. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was so awkward. And But long story short, don't use these things unless they are clean. And, you know, oh, unless there's a hurricane. Anyway. Whitney, I, that was so That was funny. such a stupid segue for me to say, I like often refer to them as the <laughs> microphone hats. And earlier today, I discovered that if I change it to this... <laughs> It looks like a hipster. Okay, you have to tell the people for audio purposes. Oh, like <laughs> if you pull if you, set, if you pull the pop filter you, back and you set yeah, it on top it of the like microphone. It's a hat that's like kind of like a saggy, you know, like hat. a baggy beanie. So it looks like a hipster. And then if you set it on the top of it, it looks like uh, one of the palace guards at Buckingham. <laughs> <laughs> and if you stuff it down like the way that it's supposed to be, it looks like a criminal who is wearing like one of the masks or an ice cream cone. <laughs> I probably am one of the weirdest people on the planet. I I just wanted everyone to know the extent of how weird I am. I think that that was great. I feel like my You're, makeup is falling off. It now. is a little bit. You're crying and it's perfect. That's great. That's awesome. What are we talking about today? We are talking about <laughs> one of my favorite places in the country. Me too. Seattle. Seattle. Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest, but specifically Seattle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Man, if you've never been to the Pacific, it is actually probably one of the more difficult places to get to because you don't really understand how much like the top left corner of the country kind of like pinches off like into Canada. California is like out there, but it curves like towards I think Texas, what you're trying you know? to say though, like navigating to get around there like you can fly in to any one of the airports that they have you have to i mean driving there to. is a bear we've done that a couple times and it it's is far like, away it's it's if you drive from nashville to it takes seattle, way longer to get from nashville forever. to seattle than it takes to get from nashville to california is what right. i'm trying to say but when you fly in to where do we go SeaTac? is that yep. where we go mm-hmm. when you fly in there there's only like the highway you get in and out. I I think I want you to elaborate a little bit more on like it being a hard place to get to. It's just it's hard to it's difficult to navigate around because of all of the water and the mountains and everything. It's like 
You got to know where you're going. You got to know where you're going and have some intent. Like the Olympic Peninsula is like right across, you know, the channel from Seattle, but it takes hours to get there. Unless you're doing like a cute little ferry. Yeah. Even then you might be waiting for a ferry. You got to know how to get there and it costs money and it's just, it's like an intentional place to go. You're not going to just accidentally end up in Seattle. It's an intentional place to go. Yes. And it's gorgeous. It is it's super pretty there. Gorgeous. There are literally like orcas oh that my swim gosh. around like in the wild and just like hang out and they have pods of them that you can track on an app and like you but know where they are. The and neighborhoods within Seattle are gorgeous. Like the whole city surrounded you by can water. See mountains like mountains all the time. At any given point. Like, like different it's mountains. beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, like when we lived in Virginia, it's like, oh, the Blue Ridge Mountains are over there. Right. And then like you drive 20 miles away and you're like, oh, the Blue Ridge Mountains are now over there, like different direction, you know? But like in Seattle, it's like, oh, the Cascades are over there. You're kind of surrounded. The, you know, this Mount Rainier is down there. Oh, there's a different like volcano over there. No, West Coast is just big. Like Seattle's just, like Washington is just big. Big. It's a big state, but there's a lot of big features. Like it's just beautiful. Like yeah. you don't go there and you're like, oh, I'm gonna stand in awe of this like medium, medium sized mountain range. It's like yeah. bam. Kim, my roommate from college, Kim, is the reason that I know anything about Seattle. Me for too. Sure. I lived with her for we two, love you, Kim. Two whole years. She's on episode. Ooh. From last year. Yep. She she's, was on an episode from last season. Where we do season. interviews. So you guys should watch that one. Yes. She's my college roommate and she taught me lots of things about life in general, but about Seattle and like just the difference between like the landscape there mm-hmm. and the landscape on the East Coast. It's so different. It's completely not, it's like you're in a different country. So like she would always make fun of the mountains like in Little Virginia. Pille pille she would like put them in air quotes, you know, like the mountains. <laughs> and I'm always, I was always like, whatever, man, they're mountains. Like yeah. I'm from Michigan, like sand dunes are mountains to me. <laughs> and then whenever we went out finally to Seattle, it was like, oh, this makes so much Dang, more sense to those me. Those are mountains. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and volcanoes, not just like mountains. And she would probably quickly tell us, well, oh. actually, actually what you're looking at is is, yep. is volcanoes. Totally. Which is actually, it was totally true. Bunch of big, big, big volcanoes. Beautiful. I love Seattle. Love the way that it looks. But why else do we love it? We also love it because there is such a different mouthfeel to like the way to people up there. The it vibe is, is different. Very different vibes. The vibe than is different. The old Bible belt. Oh guy, it's totally different. If you pff, Yeah. 100. But you know what? Where so many people say, "Oh, Pacific Northwest, that's such a dark place to go to." Or it's like, "Oh, yeah. those people are kind of like rough, you know, or they just kind of give it to you straight up." Mm-hmm. It's like, "That's why I like them." Yeah. I think that's my favorite part about it because there's no beating around the bush. It is what it is. And how you translate that into a church setting is the most interesting thing I've ever been a part of Mm -hmm. in my entire life. I have learned, I've been educated in more ways by going to the Pacific Northwest and specifically Seattle and serving in places there than most other places I've ever been to. Yeah in the whole world. Yeah. Because, you know, when, uh, and like, this is going to probably going to quickly like start to push up against people's. Yes. Tidy edges. Ooh, I love that. (laughs) That's great. But, um, when you don't have like daily interaction with people who are very different from you, you don't really have to think about like if you're in church leadership, especially, Mm-hmm. And like you're kind of in charge of like the church, little C church experience, right? In your local community, you don't have to think about welcoming people that are not like you into that context. Wow, you know, and like we've all kind of had different political things and like you know the racial reconciliation type type things that have come up in the last couple of years that have mm-hmm. been very prominent 
newsworthy kind of like things that Absolutely. make it unavoidable. Absolutely. Every church really has been confronted with that. But in Seattle, it's daily. It's like that all the time. It's just that's a normal thing. And there are multiple spheres of influence that you are interacting with on a regular basis. Uh, just in the culture that make it so that you are needing to consider a lot more people groups than just yes people that are you and look like you and believe like you and think like yes. you. And so because of that, when we have gone into churches to serve that church, yes, like we have to listen to what they are saying and the things that they're prioritizing and the ways that they are reaching their community where they're at, yes. because it's very different than the way that our church here in Nashville reaches community Absolutely. where we're yeah. at. If we were to do the same stuff that we did here, <laughs> there, off the cuff, like yeah. right in front, there's some places that would be cool with it, but then there's some places that... And vice, absolutely- same thing, vice versa. Yeah. Like if some, some church people from up there came down here and did it right. cookie cutter, we would kind of be like, this doesn't jive here very well it just you know what it seattle has taught me to have an open mind (laughs) an open mind and an open heart and to really seek god's face and ask him what are you doing on the earth here sure and how can i partner with you for what you're doing Mm. here you want to know like the thing that just came into my head was like i'm ready because I feel like it's good. Guys, I'm like already feel like the Holy Spirit. Even, we haven't even talked about we food yet. We haven't even talked about food and I'm already getting <laughs> smacked like right between the eyes by the Lord. I'm like, yes, God. I feel like the, um, I gotta stop saying that. I hate that phrase. All right. When I say like, I feel, the, and it's like, I don't, that's, I'm not talking about a feeling. I'm talking about what I'm thinking. All right, ready. What I'm thinking about is <laughs> that I said something to you the other day um, because it was a thing that God had spoken to me like in a past season about my ability to be corrected by people that I don't respect or agree with or whatever. Yeah. And God kind of said to me in, in this past season, if you can't receive the truth from somebody that you don't respect or that you don't agree with, then you don't actually love the truth. Which I was Wait. like very offended by, obviously. Oh, wow. Because truth can only come from somebody that... Yeah, which then kind of pigeonholes you, right? And it's like, well, then I already know everything there is to know about the truth. And no, like... I feel God. Yeah, like it's just kind of... Wow. So whatever. God like really hit me between the eyes with that. Wow. And a few years ago. And I thought of that phrase like in reference to the way that we look at different churches and different cultures and how people do things different than us. And, you know, we talked about this a lot in the pandemic, right? Like this church out here has been closed for a year and a half. And maybe to some people that seems like irreconcilable. Like how could you close your doors for that whole entire time? Right. When over here, this church has been open the whole entire time and to another culture, it's like, how could you possibly do that? You know? Yeah. Comparing, comparing the, that is so beautiful though, comparing that alone, just that, just that, just that from Nashville to Seattle when worlds it was actually go- worlds. Worlds apart. Worlds. And my point in, in drawing your attention to that little thing that God spoke to me is like, when you see the fruit of what the Holy Spirit is doing yes. in a place that is very outside of your context and the way that it's happening is something that doesn't look or sound or feel like it's right to you. Wow. Like, can you maybe rec- like think about how God, first of all, is always working through things that probably are not 100% right anyway. And if that is happening well, in, in that context, that's, people. that's then, just people in general. So praise God that he does move through people because we are not perfect. So well, thank what, you, Jesus. That's what I mean. It's but like, that's the emphasis it's that I want to make. Thank you, God. If it's happening there, yeah. in a thing that where I'm looking at it going like, this doesn't all make sense to me. I don't know how like good things are coming out of this. Then like somebody else is looking at the way that someone else is doing it over here going, that doesn't right. make any sense to me, but it sure looks like God must be doing work and people are coming to know the Lord and there's community and there's goodness coming out of. That's so good. And actually they're all one. We are one church. I want to get to the food stuff, but this is so good. 
Like I don't want to do backwards this week. I mean, I we'll guess just talk we can about do the real that. stuff and then we'll get to the we'll end with the food. That feel whew. To your point in saying that, I think that whenever I think of these type of situations where God takes us somewhere that's out of our normal yeah. comfort zone for how church is done or how people are presenting the gospel, I always think of the epistles. Hmm. It's like the people of Philippi are being told the same thing as the people of Ephesus. Right. And you, if I were to tell the people of or Ephesus Rome. the same thing as the people of Philippi, it wouldn't work. And actually, we talked about this on our first season of hmm. podcast stuff. Um, it's in the first couple episodes where you can't tell the same people the same thing because it might not pack as much of a punch. Yeah. With Philippi, there was something going on culturally that was really important with the way that Paul was asking people. He was strategic. The Lord blessed him with some strategy to be able to write a letter to these people that would be very, very applicable to them and, and their culture. When he wrote about stuff that happened with Ephesus, it had to do with what was going on in that town. And I just feel like any time that we have had an opportunity to go to these different places that when you think about Seattle, you think of the emphasis, emphasization, is that a word? Emphasis. The emphasis, we'll just do emphasis. (laughs) Emphasization of- (laughs) It's a lot more complicated. It totally is. That there are so many things going on there. There are so many- governmental things that are going on. There are so many political things that are going on. There are so many gender things that are going on. There are so many in the city, town ordinances, different types of people thing that are going on that if I were to ask you to do the same thing here, people would be like, they'd they'd cuss me out. They'd be like, absolutely not. We're not going to do that. And so how do you then serve people where they're at Mm. and do that? Have you ever seen the movie End of the Spear? Yes. Long time ago about the right. missionaries that went, that went to, to the, the Amazon. Like right? cannibal tribe or something yes. like that. And like the mm-hmm. somebody got killed, but then the family stayed and like Yes, and yes. Okay. There's like a s I don't remember very much of the story, so if I just butchered it, I'm really sorry. But like the these people were like very, very different in Every, like their language, Absolutely. like what they cared about, like all of these things, you know? And there were these missionaries that were trying to share the gospel with them. And for the longest time, they're trying to translate the gospel into this other language. And it's just like not making any difference. And finally, the way that the guy talks to one of the leaders of this, the tribal people that they're working alongside says something about like, the great river or something like that. He's like explains God as like the great river, like flowing and like uses these very like Mm. nature based expressions of like who God is and how God has loved them. And it was like the dude like immediately was like, he get I it. get like I get what you're saying. Yeah. And that to me is like of, you know, it's kind of like a far to one side example of like the way that culture works, like in our country like, do you want, you know, like you are talking about the gospel and like being the love of God to other people, whether they're saved or not, doesn't really matter. Like you're supposed to be filled with the fullness of God's love and let that like overflow to other people. So like you want people to experience you as love, but like, yes, sometimes love is difficult to receive and like sometimes whatever, like it's not always that simple, but the kind of like the bare minimum that you can do to be loving to people wow. is to meet them where they're at, meet them where they're at, and like, come on, try to understand them before you're like, no, you understand me. And I think that we've had so many examples of this with our friends who have done ministry yeah. with in context of Seattle. Sure. I've like had to think about things that I, I was like, I've never thought I've about. Never that thought about that. I have been. I have been blessed into understanding through the eyes and lives of my friends. Zawadi Morrow, he's also another one of our podcast people. You guys, Tommy to Black, 100%. I have learned so much from him. Kim Merrickin, like these people feel like pillars in my life. They helped me to see America. They helped me to, they taught me to love Seattle 
but they taught me to see America. Mm -hmm. And I'm one, I'm never going to get over it. It's only this compounded thing that just keeps getting better and better. But the way that they loved people where they were at with the skill set that they had, it it has inspired me and changed my life. Yeah. I mean, Kim, Kim being someone who has always done sound and uh, the church that she used to, does she still go to Cross and Crown? Mm-hmm. She used to go there. Um, but like, all the many years that she spent serving from lots this, of lo- lots of local churches, just yeah. just I think that that's what it is. I was like, Lord, what is it? What is it? Seattle has taught me how important local church is. Local, dig deep, roots in the ground, loving people day after day after day after day, meeting them the where they're at. Zwadi with the different churches that he's been at, it's always been community driven. It's always been meeting yeah. people at the front door and understanding where they're coming from, what they've been through, their lives and different things, and having it through the filter of this is Seattle. Yeah. So people are going to have lots of questions. People are going to be worried about the apologetics. People are going to be worried about the theology theological standpoint of where did you get that with God? They're gonna go. I don't really, oh my gosh, Andrew DiMazio in Portland with Rose Church. I have learned so much from these people that are gritty, um, held fast, I love Jesus people. And they don't let culture and they don't let anything sway them, but they love people right where they're at. Yeah. And they don't demonize people for having questions and, actually, and making them feel, it's like, oh, you're, like, you're from this area. They Too love, bad for you. They love people like where they're at and also kind of like defend yes. them against people who would try to change them before yes. showing them the love of Jesus. Come on. <laughs> like, Which is kind of a cool, that's something that is like quintessential, I think, of like good. yes like kind people in that neck of the woods because like I said, they're in a context where like a lot of those big ticket kind of political scary things are like right around the corner. They're Mm -hmm. not like avoidable. And there is like an element of like, hey, I'm going to actually seek to understand you, not to condone, you know, things that are like, in the Bible that are wrong, but to, to say like, I didn't start to behave like I love Jesus until I was loved by Jesus. Wow. <laughs> it's like you can't it's true. flip that equation upside down. There's an order. Receive the love of God and then be transformed by the love of God and then give the love of God. Like, not And that backwards. there isn't a compromise in between any of those things. In right. any of those stages, Jesus is Jesus is Jesus is Jesus. Yeah. And we're not going to change Jesus in order to make it fit better for you. Sure. But what you're going to realize is that you will have to be confronted with the gospel. You will have to make decisions based on the love that has been given you. And that's that's a thing too. If somebody has been kind of like given the brush off under the pretense of this is the love of Jesus, mm-hmm. Seattle basically says no thanks. Yeah, like Portland we don't, says, we don't all right, that. I don't, need, I don't need that. I need genuine, authentic, mm. consistent people who are loving from this place of gospel all the time, and then I will make my evaluation. So it just kind of occurred to me, like this, we're getting a little uh, deeply. No, but this is Seattle. You this know. is how I feel every time we talk about it. <laughs> it is, is always gets it, to you this like point. Immediately, are just like Whoa. you get sunk into yeah. like you have to know the truth, and it's so beautiful. <laughs> Whenever you said like you will have to be confronted with the gospel, mm. I think that sometimes it's easy to bypass. I'll just use an example of like me to you. Like I'm excited but scared. <laughs> if I'm trying to show you the love of Jesus mm-hmm. and you're totally different than me, yeah, and I disagree with you yeah. on a bunch of different things. Yeah. If I come to you mm. 
with those issues yes. like between us yes saying i'm confronting you with the gospel oh i'm actually not being confronted with the gospel myself i'm kind of like push, passing it off onto it's like a projection almost what needs to happen is like i mm. need to be confronted with the truth of the gospel which is i should die for you oh my god before you agree with all oh of these my things gosh. in between us. So like to the extent that I'm not really willing to confront that gospel over here, <gasps> how am I supposed to make you confront the gospel over here? That's so beautiful. That doesn't really like work. Well, then it just becomes about your opinions about the gospel and not the gospel. Or about your ability to like argue with somebody into- <laughs> No, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Because then it's about defending- what you feel about it and not actually being transformed it, by not, it and and from that transformation offering it up to sure. people. Because I have seen that. And that's where culturally when someone walks into the middle of Seattle and they go, hear the word of the Lord, and they're completely missing the point, which is Jesus met the woman at the well on purpose yeah. and didn't change who he was or who she was in order for that moment to happen. She and actually used the context that she was in in order to conceptualize the gospel so that it applied to her. He like he made himself a metaphor for what she Whoa! was doing. Which is like exactly what happened at the end of the spear. Come on. Where the dude is like he makes the gospel a metaphor like into the way that those people can understand it. <sighs> Jesus is like, what does he what does he say to the woman at the well? He's like, if you there is there's water that like you can drink it and you'll never thirst again. You know? And like, so she's kind of like a little thrown off by that. She's like, You're crazy. There's well, no water knew, like that. If you knew the water that I had, yes. you wouldn't thirst again. Right. And so he's kind of like backdooring her a little bit, <laughs> but he's not coming to her immediately being like Hey, do you know that you're a woman and okay. I'm not supposed to talk to you and you're a Samaritan and I'm a Jew and we don't like, he doesn't need to. This is why you should repent. This is why you should <laughs> you should change because you Here's don't have my, the same. My billboard, I brought it with me so you could read it <laughs> and know exactly how I feel about you. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I just, if it, the analogy of hunting came to my head and I know nothing about hunting, but I know that if you're loud <laughs> and you, and I never want to know anything about hunting. I just literally hunting. imagined you like in an Elmer Fudd costume, like trying to figure out how to shoot a With deer. With the <laughs> you're like, <"Whoa." laughs> No, if I were to stomp through a woods and not think about the wind and the scent and all of these different things and basically make a ruckus and just totally ignore the environment around me, I would never, ever get successful at hunting. You have to blend in. And you don't lose yourself while you're blending in. You're just becoming aware to your environment and you're not disregarding mm -hmm that something that lives in that place, that's their normal. Mm. That's their normal. And Seattle, when I watch people love people through the lens of the gospel, like through, through the gospel, through the lens of culture there, yeah. I see people, they are, they're not manipulative. Please don't hear me on that, that I'm basically saying, oh, you're hunting, so you're being manipulative. No, Jesus was a genius. He was strategic. He knew what he was doing. He didn't scare people right off. He's like, instead of telling Peter, you need to rise up and become a better man, he goes, follow me. He doesn't <laughs> give him the map out plan and basically say, Peter, you are a potty mouthed, um, <laughs> super shyster type of a human being and you need to straighten up. Here's all the different things. And you're arrogant and you're pretty bad you're at You're super fishing. prideful and you're just, <laughs> just bad at life in general. So I'm gonna tell you all the ways that you're going to be. No, Jesus goes, follow me. And through relationship and time, he builds into Peter what he wants from him via proximity. In order 
to display the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're gonna need to get close to people. You're gonna have to participate in their lives. You're gonna have to stick around and stay. And you know Mm. what? People in Seattle who love Jesus really well do that for their communities every single day. And they're experts. They're experts about it. They're experts, which is why (laughs) when somebody like Andrew Damasio comes to our church here and he goes, guys, this, 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 and this is not local church. And we go, it's because we've done stuff in a Bible belty kind of way for so long that we have forgotten that, oh, in order for you to actually have transcendent gospel movements, you're going to have to get super close to people and you're going to have to create stuff that ma- that makes it so that you're close to them all the time. Yeah. Oh man, Seattle has taught me that people matter. Mm-hmm. That they matter and that they're worth your attention and time and proximity. They're worth your relationship and you can't skip out on it. Zawadi has taught me that. Yeah. The kindness that he has and the way that and he- And like had, the patience. The patience. The patience that mm. him and Aaron, his wife, have to be with people, to stay with people. And that there's is, like a certain, oh. there's like an element of like, if we can't get it done fast, yes. then like my life doesn't matter. Or something. I feel that way sometimes, for sure. sure. Like sure. I, I kind of feel like this thing that I'm working on is not like reaching enough people, or mm-hmm. like we're not doing enough work, or there's more to like. I'm not having some like big movement. Come on. Or like, like big results don't equal yeah, success. Like if you don't have like a big immediate mm-hmm. like outpouring of like whatever it is that you're after, like it's not valuable, right? And I don't think that you have the luxury. I mean. I think that anybody that does long-term missions overseas- Wow, please talk about that, please. Like does not even have the remote luxury of feeling like they get a scratch on the back because of like their Instagram following or something like that. Like they have to just wake up every day and keep living in the context near the people that they are loving. And that actually matters more than- the programs and the that that specific Northwest for me, yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. And I agree. That education has taught us. I think that that's why we have people in our lives now the way that we do sure. because of this understanding that people are worth taking time over. Uh, I'm reading right now the Long Obedience in the Same Direction by. Um, mm. Eugene Peterson. Freaking Eugene. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Eugene. Yeah. I think that is... That's it. Kind of like in a world that is constantly changing and constantly throwing new things into the... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like the sphere of like like the reference point. Mm. There's a lot of churches and people in Seattle who are like, I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to stay. I'm going to love people. I'm going to do the thing. Yeah. Because Jesus did that and it changed everything. Yep. Oh, I freaking love Seattle. Can we talk about coffee now? (gasps) Because you can't talk about Seattle without talking about coffee. You can't. But I love coffee. Seattle is the only place that I will double fist coffee. (laughs) And I don't drink coffee (laughs) ever. That's right. You really don't. I don't. There's so much good coffee in Seattle. Okay. Oh, I have a few. My number one favorite coffee shop in the planet that I have been to yet, because I'm sure there's somewhere else, but within my nation, <laughs> Victrola Coffee. It's also my favorite. Oh my it's gosh. Also my favorite. I can't speak. Well, <sighs> they just know what they're doing. They just really know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Like, Everything about, like, uh, if coffee is ever bitter, like this one time we went to somewhere in Nashville, I will not name the place, but I sipped some of it for Whitney and I was like, this is trash. And she goes, you're right, this isn't good. I don't know what it is. It's Mary like- Matt doesn't drink coffee. It's my party trick. Haven't picked up on that. She like doesn't really love coffee unless it's like top shelf. <laughs> 
A plus quality coffee. So somehow, without drinking hardly any coffee in her life, she has built a palate where she can tell when coffee is like pretty crappy or if coffee is like sort of okay or if it's like, oh, wait. This is perfect. That's amazing. This is perfect. And Victrola. Victrola is perfect. perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. They're, it's, it's, so simple. They roast all of their stuff. They do cupping education. They are they are full fledged. Yep. They're Seattle in branding, you know, in in like standard wise. But honestly, they th- roast it right there, like in the shop. It's perfect. They do like different like little educational cuppings and stuff that you can go to and hear about their growers and their farmers. And I like- get a lavender oat milk latte, and that's it. And you just walk away going, "Yep, I'm stepping. I'm." Dancing through the lavender fields up on the Olympic Peninsula, like this, and their like pastries and stuff are really everything's good. good. Their it's breakfast great. sandwiches are good. Their burritos are good. Everything, and everything if is you good. buy a bag of coffee, yes, you get a free drip or a shot of espresso, which yes, is like do. just a great way to leave the store. Yes, you do. It's a, it's just great. My it's f- right on. Uh, Pine is it on Pine Street? I I don't ever know. I just know that when we go there, I'm there. I think it's on Pine. It's like pretty, like down in the same neck of the woods as um, in the same part of town as Pike Place Market. And it's actually right across the street from the Starbucks, the original Starbucks Reserve Roastery, which is like the Disney World of Starbucks. Well, it's not, it's, it's their reserve spot. It's their like flagship reserve store. Yes. It's Is that what you meant by yeah. original? It's, it's, it's very cool. Everyone should go in. And it's the really fir- fun. I mean, the first Starbucks is also several blocks up the road from there by Pike Place. So the reserve is cool. The reserve the merch is, is cool. The, the reserve is just like gives you all of this history and methodology of like how to make it di- like very fun. how making coffee in different methods brings out different pieces of it. They have flights of all these different kinds. They have and special it tastes drinks. really good. And honestly, if you go there mm-hmm. and get that like kind of like big corporate style understanding of like how Starbucks has become like the worldwide conglomerate of yeah like coffee that they have it's you know any coffee drinker would say that's pretty it's not amazing. the greatest coffee ever by any means but the way that they make it consistent across a massive span is because they make it the way that they make it which is to kind of burn it a little bit <laughs> Victrola, <laughs> on the other hand, you can watch them make this like very small batch coffee experience where it's not consistent to the extent that Starbucks is because every single batch that they make is done by a human being and like there's granularity in the process and like it can taste a little bit different one day to the next. And it's, it's awesome. It's perfect. And like the two different experiences. Kinda it's like, great. It's a good contrast. It's a fun coffee education thing. Yeah. I think everyone should do that. My favorite experience that we ever did going to Victrola was during the riots when that mm. whole section of Seattle was boarded up because yep. at night people would just go ham and throw <laughs> things stuff. at windows and break things. Yeah. It was amazing to walk among there in like the morning to early afternoon area. We were completely safe. It was fine. But what I loved is that I felt like God was like, go. Right in the smack dab middle of 2020, it was an experience to be able to be Im- Im- immersed in. That was when September 2020? It was like right after the summer yeah, when all of the- Like October. Yep. And it was a good way for us to see- what the rest of the world had going on like during that season for sure. But also to find the truth, which was that the streets are not flaming every single night. (laughs) Right. And people aren't like throwing things at any given point of the day. It's when people are bored at night and they basically are off work. And And I mean, people still like live there and go to work there and like that's just it there were people everywhere they were still going to their jobs they right. were still doing stuff it's like the world was still moving even though all this other stuff was happening and i don't know it once yeah. again seattle you always you always open my mind up to be mm. able just to see more than that's what's being displayed yeah everybody else's opinion of seattle and actually getting a real glimpse sure. of it yourself yeah. food places no, um one more coffee one more coffee Storyville Coffee. Storyville. Storyville Coffee. There's like, f- oh. what, like five of them. There's one down by Pike Place. There's one in Queen Anne. Yes. Bellevue. Bellevue. 
I can't. I, there's, there's, there's a few, few of them, though. But you guys. They're great. And the thing that they are notorious for. Notorious for. Is, and I mean, this has happened multiple times. It's not like super rare. No, it happens every day. It happens every day, multiple Four times o'clock. a day. They will bring out this you guys. freaking amazing chocolate cake. <sighs> and if you are sitting in the shop, they'll just bring you a slice of cake. They give you a slice of cake for free. And they're like, would you like free. a piece of cake? For free. For free. And like, and it's warm and it is dark and it oh, is it's so luscious perfect and it is coffee. an amazing piece of cake. And you're like, chocolate cake? No. I will go. I will. Oh, we yeah. have to go every time. It's like, we have to go to Storyville at that time so that we can get the chocolate cake. It's amazing. And their coffee's great too. Yep. And their coffee's great too. And wasn't it born out of like the love that you have for people meeting them where they're at? Because I think like the owner has either like an autistic or, or it is something like they have Down syndrome something or like something that. like that. I, like they're one of their. Wouldn't like brothers quote, or something. Quote you on that directly, but it's probably like the information's on their website. They're like the awesome. The reason why they started. I have it a gift card in my room for Storyville, and we have gotten free gift cards because of being kind yeah, to baristas there and stuff. I'm telling you, when you travel, just be nice. Just to people. be nice to people. You will be blessed for it. You will be blessed. Really? Oh, Storyville coffee is amazing. Uh huh. I want to go now. I know. I just like want to go out Dang there for it, a I weekend go or now. something. Um, and food. It, we were trying to like talk a little bit before we started this, like what things do we live? There's just, there's actually like so many good Asian food places in you Seattle. Guys, it's unreal. It's so, it's just the best. Oh, wait. Well, what, talk about your pho place. The, the first time we ever had pho was in Seattle. Before it was mainstream out here, which now you can get pho like anywhere in the country. I'm pretty sure that pho was doing its thing. I just wasn't aware. Yeah, but now it's like trendy. Well, yes, but you're right. But I, whatever. Pho has been around for thousands of years and I'm. it's probably not, but it's still delicious. And banh mi's. Banh mi's are trendy now, but- Well, banh mi's- They've were been around a thing, for no from the Vietnam War and stuff like that, and before that, when French influencers came with baguettes, and then they did the thing with pate, and then they added all the other things. I'm telling you guys, food equals people. Period. <laughs> you want to know about people? Get to know what they eat in their cultural references. Anyways, you got two minutes to talk. I'm about ready. Pho. First time, Kim took us. She's like, have you ever had pho? I said, no. She's like, what is going on? We have to go get pho. She's like, I'm going to take you to my favorite pho place. And Kim was a, another reason why I love food more than the way that I do. Mm-hmm. She introduced us. Took us to this place called Pho Bok, And it was in a house that had a ship, like half of a boat that was like slapped onto the side of it um, as kind of like a place that you can sit. But it just became a part of the house. And let me tell you, this place and their pho, it's it's a Vietnamese dish that is bone broth and whatever else they put in it that makes this delicious, unctuous, silky smooth liquid. And then you put different meats on top and the hotness of the broth either cooks the meat or you have meatballs or something else you put in. I like getting the rare beef. That's my favorite. And then- You've got these rice noodles that are underneath. You get bean sprouts put on top, jalapenos, cilantro, um, sriracha, and then hoisin sauce. It's a it's a perfect food. And actually in Vietnam, Vietnam it's a breakfast yeah, food. It's great. Because it fills you up. But pho bok is the best. So much so that when we went to Virginia and we met somebody there at a church, yeah. and she's like, oh, I'm from, I'm from Seattle. And I was like, oh, I love... Like one of my favorite places to eat there is Fabok. She's like, I love Fabok. Like she knew, and she actually was she Vietnamese. Knew about it. And she, I was like, oh, she's like, that's good taste. I was like, yep. yes. So that's my favorite. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a bowl of pho right now. <laughs> this is the last thing that I'm going to say about the Pacific Northwest, and then we're going to tie it up. All right, I'm ready. Donuts. Wait. That's actually real life. At the end of this season, we're going to make a montage of all the times the MP says, wait. <laughs> wait. 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 <laughs> yeah. That'll be great. Um, the donuts, on the West Coast in general, like if you get west of the Rockies, I will say, where the air is actually dry. This is real life, people. 
something about Science. the way the dough rises and like the moisture. There's not there's in no the dough, humidity. Like the air sucks it right out. Yes, and, because you know it's the the I'm sure it's got something to do with like the ionic charge I'm of like so moisture excited. in the donut yeah, versus why not? outside. Who knows? So it's all great. the moisture just like evaporates out of the donut and makes them just so you can eat a half a dozen donuts. And I'm not talking like cronuts. I'm no, talking about I'm yeast, talking about real donuts. Just donuts. Plain old donuts. Like you go to Kroger and you're like, I'm gonna go get the donut out of the case. Honestly I'm going to say something controversial. Miss me Shocking. with Shocking. cronuts. <laughs> I don't want your croissant donut. Like, I don't want it. I want a croissant. Well, Just give me a croissant. That's true. And a cup of coffee. I'm happy as a clam. That's true. That's or true. Or give me a donut. But the thing is, is, because we've had donuts in this way, it's ruined me when you have a donut here on the East Coast and it literally feels like you're eating kind of like a brick. A brick. Yeah. Go to the West Side and there's they're, they're so light good. and fluffy and you could have like three and a bitter cup of coffee and you're just like, did we talk about this in the last episode? Donuts and evaporation? I feel like we did. Maybe I'm wrong. Not the last one, but in the last, Thailand? last one. Or Midwest. In the Midwest? No, I, I guess we did. So. Anyways, maybe I've just talked about this so much when I tell we people were, I'm so passionate about we were donuts. We're driving very late at night <laughs> from Heavenly Donuts. Oh. Heavenly Donuts. That's what this donut place we had is played called. At like a, a church on <clears throat> Wednesday night in Portland. Yes. And we were driving, driving back. back up to where we were staying, which was like south of Tacoma Seattle, area. In Tacoma. Mm-hmm. And we were like, we just had the munchies and it was like two and a half hour drive. So it was dark, like pitch black dark. If you've ever been in Washington state at night. Yeah. It's dark, great. dark, dark. We love it. And I just happened to search like coffee or something like that to see if like we could find a Starbucks or something. And this little place, Heavenly Donuts, open 24 hours, pops up on the south side of Washington state. And we pulled in there and grabbed a dozen. We crushed, we crushed it. A dozen donuts, I'm and I'm talking sure. crowlers. I'm talking maple bars. I'm talking apple fritters. I'm talking. I mean, and we're just oh, <laughs> just this place. <laughs> we're just killing these donuts. Ooh, and they were like, it was like literally like ten dollars <laughs> and a bitter cup of coffee that's behind that counter. That and probably had like, been like roasting mm, in that bitter thing mm, for sugar, like sugar, twelve mm, hours. Bitter, <laughs> mm, sugar, guys, it's so so good. Yes. All right. Well. There's a million other places that we can talk about too. Asian food is king out there. There's some Mexican places that we've been to. Thai like, food. Like just incredible. Sushi incredible. is great. But yeah, those coffee places. What's the uh, the uh, dim sum? There's great dim sum there. I mean, there's just a lot. There's oh my a lot. Gosh. If you if you go to Seattle and it's one of those places you can like trust the Yelp score, you know. You really like, can. There's so many options. You actually can. Ain't nobody gonna have a thousand five star reviews on Yelp if it's not so true. Gonna be some of the best food you've ever put in your mouth. So, so. true. But you know, a long go, go up to the Pacific. A Northwest. long story short, you got go there. Go, go, experience something different, and and go and be prayed up. Be prayed up to experience the fullness of what it is because yeah. there's so much there past what might be anywhere near offensive. Mm. And that's the same with me. And I have just, I just love that area. I love those people. And I love what the Lord has done in me yeah. because of those people. Thank you, Jesus, yes. for the Pacific Northwest. Amazing. You guys, we did it. Another episode down, episode four. Pacific Northwest, Seattle. We love you. We do. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Matters Over Miles. Miles. We love you guys. We're going to have a little bit of thing afterwards, more information about Wire Within Ministries, the nonprofit that we run that helps people um, in ministry, their ministry leaders and their families get free counseling and resources to help lead from a place of health rather than lack. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're stoked about it. Um, We're in the process of this. Whitney's already counseling half a dozen people and the list keeps growing. If you know- all of our worship leading ministries and stuff like that, all. All of it. All of it coincides with that. Happens in one happy home now, Water Within Ministries. It's just awesome. So if you want to learn more information about that, go to waterwithinministries.com. Everything will be laid out there as well as a contact sheet um, for prayer and even counseling. If if you or someone else you know yeah. in ministry 
wants Absolutely. to get connected with us. We would love that for you. But thanks for joining us on, on the show, guys. Have a great day. Love you. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us on the Matters Over Miles podcast, a resource of Water Within Ministries. If you would like to be a supporter of the show, head over to water-within.com backslash WWM and click the donate button at the bottom of the page. All donations are tax deductible and greatly appreciated. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.